Welcome back to another brand new episode of Let's Talk on Blue Ridge 11. I'm your host, Chad Landers. Thanks for joining us again. Really appreciate it. And we've got another great show planned for you. This is episode four. Here we go. My first guests are a brother and sister duo that graduated from Ephrata High School over a decade ago, and they were known for their skills on the soccer field at both the high school and the collegiate level. So let's welcome to the show Ephrata grads Derek and Leah Seip. Thanks for coming on both of you. Excited for our conversation today. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, for sure. Now, Leah, you're the younger sibling here, right? <laughs> so uh, how was that sibling rivalry? Were, were you and Derek able to kind of do that on the soccer field or was he too much older than you? Um, I think growing up, just because, you know, he's only really two and a half years older than me. Um, there was always that rivalry, whether we were playing basketball in our driveway or I don't even know stuff in the basement we play floor <laughs> hockey so i think definitely we always had that sibling rivalry um cool so i don't know i'll let derek talk to him. well i have a question for derek then if effort needs a penalty kick to win the game in overtime derek who's taking the shot and why is it leah <laughs> <laughs> so if i had to answer i would say it's paul McHenry. <laughs> um, i don't know i didn't take pks because paul was really good at them um i guess leah did you took them throughout the most majority of your high school. I scored more of my goals kind of on the flow of the game and not off the set pieces. So okay. if you had to pick someone, I guess you'd pick Leah. But depends who's in goal. Well, I picked right then. <laughs> All right, I don't, I don't want to get you guys going at each other too much here just yet. So we will officially start the show and we'll tell everyone, Derek, fill us in. What are you up to these days? I'm um, teaching second grade at Calico and I've been coaching there for I'm in my eighth season right now, which is a little bit crazy. I don't feel like I'm as old as that number reflects, um, but I guess I am. So I obviously got into it at a young age and, um, you know, it's exciting to be back in just the competitive side of things and have a chance to coach. It's way different than playing. And, you know, that was a hard transition at first to, you know, kind of ease my competitiveness that I naturally have. And try to like instill that in others which you know as a coach you realize quickly that that's not easy to do um but no, i really love the program that we're a part of i love what we're doing back at cacalico and i think we have a group of kids that have really worked hard over the years and you know it's starting to show with uh, the results on the field awesome yeah i can't believe it's eight years also that kind of caught me off guard the other day leah how about you why don't you fill everybody in on uh, what you're up to these days yeah, so after I graduated from Messiah, I started coaching college soccer. Um, and honestly, it's a dream come true. Um, I was at Bucknell for three years. I then got a head job at Lancaster Bible for two years. And then uh, this would have been my fourth season at Lebanon Valley. But, you know, because of the pandemic, um, we had to cancel our season. But kind of like, you know, Derek, like, I don't know, it's just, you know, it's, it was hard at first transitioning from being a player to being a coach because you still have that competitive vibe. And <laughs> I think, it, you know, coaches have something a little bit different in them and that's why we coach. And so, um, you know, it was hard for me to turn that player mindset off and be like, oh, you know, I want to still be out there playing it, but how do I inspire my girls, mm -hmm. um, you know, to play at the highest level that they possibly can? Um, every single day. And so, um, yeah, that's that's what I've been up to. Awesome. Yeah, taking a little break for COVID right now, but I believe you guys getting back to it in the spring. Uh, that's, 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 that's the, the hope right now, yeah. so fingers cool. crossed. All right. Well, we will get into the high school days for both of you. I'm excited to talk about that and college, of course. But first, let's talk about both of you guys being involved in our summer series that we had, 11 of the last 20. Leah, you made it on our girls' top 11 list. You were number seven. Derek just missed the boys' soccer list. He was honorable mention. So, uh, Leah, did you have a chance to tease Derek at all about being ranked higher than here on our list? Yes, of course. Uh, we went back and forth about that. Um, and obviously, you know, it was an honor you know, to even be mentioned on that. There were some great names. And obviously, there's been some great people that have come through our area and have played soccer. So, um, I felt honored, but of course I had to tease Derek a little bit by making it and he didn't. Yeah, tough list to get on there, Derek. I mean, we yeah. have Andrew Wanger at the top of it. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a, it's a good list to be a part of, but I will, I will add that 
No, I, I feel like I, I probably should have been on, but I would also say I feel like Leah should have been higher than what she was as well. Okay, hey, yeah. I mean, there's always, that's the best part. There's always room to kind of <laughs> argue. And, and trust me, the other coaches were arguing as well. They were trying to maneuver people in different ways. So uh, those were tough lists to do, but we had a lot of fun. And I uh, hope to have a lot of fun here with you guys. As uh, Derek, let's kind of lead off with, with your high school days. You came first over there at Effort. You played, mm -hmm. I believe, 2002 to 2005. Uh, what was it like playing for the mounts back then you guys had a lot of really good players on those teams yeah we were just ultra talented i remember like even before i was there just growing up and going to games and and being a part of what it was and you know, there's just phenomenal play after phenomenal player that came through and um you know i was fortunate to step in and be a part of that obviously with with aj Kopp and west Downinger and bobby davis some of those names that just went to some some big time schools after um high school i think we we wish we could have had a bit more success. We ran into mm -hmm. um, Manhattan Township, who was kind of a juggernaut during those those years, and we couldn't quite overcome them. But um, just a lot of great games to be a part of, and a lot of a lot of success that we were able to have, and you know, it was fun doing it. All right, Leah, over to you. Let's give you a chance here. You had a pretty impressive high school career, uh, so we'll run through some of it here. Started just about every game in high school for you. You were a four-time LL League All Star. The 2008 section MVP you were all state that year as well. Uh, what did you enjoy about being a lady mount there? Do you have a good memory for us? Yeah, I think for me, um, it was just being with my teammates, honestly. You know, you go to school with them every day, um, and they, you know, you're really playing with your best friends. And so, you know, I think a lot of my high school was we would end up second in. The section and so we're not winning that section title and um, that's a little disappointing but um, what I remember most is just all the inside jokes with my teammates and how much fun we had at practice and on the school bus rides to games and on the way home and how now I'm still friends with most of those girls as well um, and so you know that had a huge impact on me and you know now you know kids are dealing with choosing between high school and uh, club soccer. And I can't even imagine having that, you know, choice when I'm in high school, um, because I enjoyed playing for my hometown so much and with my friends so much. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I feel fortunate when I was never put in that position. Awesome. Well, you had some, uh, great decisions to make when you went to college, you picked Messiah college, good choice on you there. Uh, you went to play for four consecutive national championships with them and winning three. I hope I have that right. Uh, and, and my favorite stat here in your college career, which was from around 2008 to 2011, Messiah was 96, one and four. How the heck were you ladies so dominant during that run? Um, again, I, you know, I think that, you know, what's special about Messiah and Derek can speak to this too, playing on the men's side is we just love each other and loved playing soccer. And so, you know, there wasn't anything that any of us wouldn't do to play another game with one another. And so, you know, we don't, people always ask like, how are you guys so good? Of course, you know, coach recruits really good players who could play at a higher level, you know, division two, II, division one. Um, so of course that plays a factor, but I think when it comes down to it, like we just really loved being with one another. Um, and so it makes kind of the soccer part of it really easy then. Um, I don't know, Derek, what's your take? <laughs> no, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, first it comes down to like the, the culture and the players that, that are established there. And the year in, year out, there's guys that are turning down division one offers to go play at, at Messiah, a place where can't, can't offer that money. It can't give them anything, but it offers them a unique opportunity to have tremendous success, but also develop these lifelong relationships that you don't get everywhere else, not the depth that you get at Messiah. And when you get into games that are tough, and there, there's plenty of games where you play against teams that are better than you, but Messiah always finds a way to win because they're together. They Everyone wants to work for the other person. Um, and, you know, individual success takes a back seat to the team success. And that's what allows teams to continue repeatedly be, be successful. And 
it's not something where it's a fluke and year year they pop up and they win and a couple years later maybe they have a chance again like it's just continued success Derek you know you talk about playing soccer at Messiah the men's team just as incredible I believe they have a total of 11 championships in division three and uh, they won a couple when you were there like it was you were there for two of them if I'm not mistaken right yeah, I was there for two, and then my senior year, I wasn't able to play. I got I got hurt as a freshman and slowly deteriorated as, as my knee went, as the my career went on. But they ended up winning again the the senior year as well. So I think there was there's like a 10, 10 or 12 consecutive years where if you played for Messiah, you won at least three national championships. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, it's just amazing to think about that to be a part of that. But then you take yourself back from it all and just look at it as a whole, and you're like, that doesn't happen. Um, teams don't do that no matter how good they are. And you know, you got to think about how how special it was to gain those experiences and have those weekends that that yeah. you had throughout those years. So, do you have a favorite championship year there, Derek? Oh, that, that's hard to say. I mean, they're all. <laughs> oh, hey, sorry. So yeah, it's hard to pick there, right? Uh, it's hard to pick one moment and obviously like the national championships and stuff are great, but kind of like what Leah was alluding to in high school, like it's, it's so many of the other things that you remember more mm -hmm. and that meant more to you. And obviously you have a couple of rings and that's sweet, but what you remember afterwards and what lives afterwards is the relationships that you have with the, the guys on the teams. All right. I'm going to mark you down for 2008. I'll just pick one there for you. <laughs> Leah, do you have a favorite year national championship year? A favorite national championship yeah. year. Um, I would maybe say my sophomore year, so 2009. Okay. Um, between like the spring of my freshman year into my sophomore year, it just kind of clicked like, oh, this is what college soccer is. And um, this is the standard of what you have to play to, to be able to be on the field. And for me, it just clicked as a player. And I started get having really great relationships with my teammates. Um, I made really, really good friendships and that year just sticks out in my mind because of all those things. But honestly, you know, all of them, even the year we lost, um, it still was an amazing ride to yeah. get there. Um, sucks, you know, <laughs> losing one game in your college career and it's in the national championship. Um, Hey, but, most people you know, can't I still, say that. You know, remember all yeah. those, you yeah. know, bus rides, what we did in the hotel rooms so with each other. Funny story about that year. So I, <laughs> this is I was just out of college and was working in Philadelphia. So I watched their semifinal game and they always, um, you know, played on one weekend, the, the final four. So I was watching semifinals and they won. And I decided as like a poor, just out of college kid that I was going to fly to San Antonio. Wow. So I actually found a cheaper ticket from Baltimore. So I drove to Baltimore at like 4 a.m., hopped on the plane, went down there, got there, like surprised Leah for the national championship game. And then that was like the one game in her career that they lost. Yeah. Um, so so you're the bad luck. experience in the end. But yeah. yeah, maybe. Um, but see, I think that story, you know, yeah, Derek came, of course, because I was playing, but the men were there as well. And so I think that story speaks volumes to like why Messiah is special. Like, my first year out of college, I flew to San Antonio, just like Derek. I'm this poor, you know, first year out of college, have, you know, I'm coaching at Bucknell, not making a ton of money. And I fly to San Antonio because my college team is playing in the national championship. Um, and it's not just like us, like it's, I mean, handfuls of people just go there because they love Messiah soccer and they're alumni and they feel proud. And so I think that speaks volumes to how special the program is too. Um, alumni who, you know, really don't have any business going to a final four that's in San Antonio or just doing it um, because they love it so much. That's great. Those are great stories, guys. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate so much both of you coming on. We are out of time. Leah, thank you so much for coming on. Let's talk, sharing the memories, having fun with us. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Yep, thank you. And Derek, thank you for hopping on after that game today. I know you were a busy boy, and uh, we appreciate you making some time for us. Good luck with Cacalico Boys Soccer. Postseason's coming up. We're hoping to see you guys there as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much. What a fun conversation. Love getting siblings together, sometimes stirring up those rivalries. Hope you enjoyed that. We've got more show on the way. Coming up next on Let's Talk, a local football player that made quite an impact in his senior year and found himself in that state championship game that everyone dreams of. Stay with us. <laughs> <laughs>